Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Then Yahweh God formed the man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living soul, a living nefesh in Hebrew. He breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. He was formed from the dust of the ground. Hey, guess what? God took this dust of the ground from outside of the garden. Because after he formed the man and breathed into his nostrils, he placed him into the garden. There's something very powerful there. That Adam was formed outside of the garden. You know who else I think was formed outside of the garden in a way? The serpent. In Genesis chapter 3... Verse 14, it says that Yahweh God said to the serpent, because you have done this cursed, oh, because you have done this, comma, excuse me, cursed are you above all livestock or behema in Hebrew and above all beasts of the field. By the way, beasts is the Hebrew word kai, it means alive or living. In fact, that's where Eve's name derives from, the Hebrew word kai, which means alive or living. That is why she is the mother of all the living or those that are alive. But you know, it's almost like more like, hey, Eve, you're the mother of those that are dying. Because outside of the garden, everybody that was born through Adam and Eve, you know what? Their children... They might have entered the world looking like brand new life. But guess what? Death was in them. Did you know that? Their ultimate, their ultimate destination was to walk out their course of life and head their way toward death. Back to uh, the serpent. Cursed are you above all the livestock, the behema, and above all the living, all those alive. From where? From the field. Of the field means that you're from the field. Of the field. From the field. Because that's where you're from. On your belly you shall go. And dust, the very thing that Adam was made from, afar in Hebrew. He was formed from the afar, outside of the garden. And from this afar, this dust, outside of the garden, this is what Yahweh tells the serpent. Dust you shall eat all the days of your life. So the serpent seems to have some type of a form to him. And perhaps this form was taken from outside of the garden as well. And perhaps that serpent and his followers that are of a spiritual nature as well. Maybe they also were formed outside of this garden. And they think this earth belongs to them. Just some stuff to think about, you guys. I know, I know, I know. You think we've been taught so many things about, you know, these beings that are in outer space flying around and all that and spaceships from outer space and different planets and galaxies and all that stuff. You know, that is... I'm sorry to say there's something called science and there's something called scientism. And one of them's a religion. And I guarantee you it's not science. There's a reason the devil wants to take this earth. Why? So he can just be invisible and walk around invisibly? Or did he have some kind of a form? Of course he's spirit, but so are we. We have bodies. We're formed in the image of God. But this serpent wasn't. And this is his place in his head. And he's the god of this place. Well, he's the god of the matrix, that's for sure. 
we'll get to talking about that eventually. I really want to talk about that. You could be in the matrix or you could be no part of it. Jesus says you're in the world, but you're no part of it, right? What is the world? It is the matrix ran by the matrix. The matrix is God who is this serpent right here, the God of that matrix. The matrix is a place that seems like reality, but it's not. By the way, reality in Greek means truth. And Jesus says, I am the truth, meaning he is the reality. The matrix seems like the reality. Everything smells right, tastes right, touches right, feels right. Has a little chaos and disorder in there. But hey, that's just how things go. No, that place is the great delusion. If you're in that place, you are already in the great delusion. And since you're in a great delusion, there's going to be an enhancement sent to the matrix that's going to cause even a greater delusion to add on top of the great delusion. It's going to be a super great delusion. It's going to be mega delusion. But Jesus says, you're no part of it. When you got him in you, you're no part of that matrix anymore. You stepped out of it. That's the reality. That's the truth. But I, I don't want to go into that. We'll talk about the matrix again someday. <clears throat> so, back to Genesis chapter 2. Let's go back into this breath of life. I just gave you some stuff to think about with the serpent and all. But I want to get back to this piece of the puzzle. Yahweh God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. I told you life is Kai. Breath is Neshama. Neshama, a feminine noun. Guess what else is a feminine noun? Nefesh, when Adam became a living soul. That also is a feminine noun. Guess what else is a feminine noun in Hebrew? Ruach. Do you know who the Ruach is? Ruach means spirit. Did you know the Ha Kodesh Ruach? Ha is the Kodesh Holy Ruach. Spirit. Feminine noun. Interesting things. It says that God created man in his image. Male and female, he created them. Uh, interesting. Man was created in his, God's image. Male and female, he created them. The female was inside of the man because the female, Eve, was removed from Adam. So, interesting. God has something that seems to be of a, like a feminine quality. Wonder if that's the helper. Interesting that Eve was called the helper too. And we have a helper. Nishama, the breath of Kai. Nishama Kai. Breath of life. Nishama means breathe or breath. Breath. Not breathe, breath. And when God, Nishama, Kai, breathed life, the man became into Adam's nostrils, he became a living soul. I want to just share something else with you. In the book of Mark. Mark chapter 15. Mark chapter 15, verse 37. And Yeshua, Jesus, uttered a loud cry and breathed 
his last. Breathed his last is one Greek word. It's found three times in the scriptures. It's found twice here in Mark. In verse 39, it says, And when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. What? Just when he saw in the way that Jesus breathed his last, breathed his last, this man said, truly this man was the son of God? What was it about the way that Jesus breathed his last? I mean, when people breathe their last, I, I, I've never been there when a, a human being has died by their side. But I have heard from others that it makes a very distinctive kind of sound and um, I'm, I'm sure this centurion heard a bunch of other people that he had part of hanging on crosses and such. I'm sure there were other people he heard breathe their last. And he didn't say, well, that must be a son of God for sure. Did you hear the way he breathed out? But this guy, something about what Jesus released out of him, this man knew. <laughs> oh, this man was close. This man was right there. And when he saw, what does it say? When he saw, not when he heard. The centuria, centurion stood facing him. He is up close to Yeshua. He saw in the way that Yeshua breathed out his last, or in he in Greek, ek neo, ek neo. By the way, ek neo comes from two Greek words, ek, which means from out of, and neo, which means to blow or breath. Here's what's interesting. Speaking of the matrix, they get Neo, N-E-O, they get his name from this Greek word, Neo. The P is silent. P-N-E-O. The P is silent. Now you can look up ne Neo's name and it means new, right? But it's taken from Greek which means to blow or breathe. In other words, this man Neo represents somebody who had the breath of life in him. But he didn't have that breath of life until he took the red pill because there's a difference because the red pill is truth. That's what it represents, truth. The blue pill was a lie. The red pill was reality. The blue pill was the delusion. Stay in the delusion called the matrix and everything will just stay the same. Take this blue pill. But if you choose the red pill, you just chose the red pill of truth and when Neil swallowed that red pill down, whom the breath of life entered in just like when you receive Christ the breath of life entered in but I have the breath of life I've been breathing oxygen all my life he did not Yahweh did not blow oxygen into Adam's nostrils in the garden outside of the garden I mean he placed him in the garden he blew into his nostrils the breath of life. There is a difference with the breath of life and with oxygen, you guys. Something about the way Yeshua breathed his last 
the centurion says, truly this man was the son of God because he saw something. So did Saul. Saul saw something too. He saw a great flash of light. And his eyes were so used to being in darkness, what Saul called light, which seemed to be light, just like these angels of light, these angels that seem to be light, are they truly light? Saul, he thought his eyes were full of light until true light hit his eyes and his eyes were so succumbed to blindness, to darkness, I should say, that when the true light hit his eyes, he experienced blindness. And let me tell you, we're not just talking about physical blindness here. We're talking about something spiritual, you guys, which manifested in the physical. Just like this serpent in the garden. We're talking about something spiritual that manifests in the, in, in the physical. Something taken from the field. Verse 37 of Mark 15. And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. Ek. Neo. By the way. Neo. It's tied into the roots of the Greek word pneuma. And the Greek word pneuma is spirit. So there's something about spirit and breath in that word that Jesus released out of himself. King James in the book of Luke mentions the third time this word, ekneo, ekneo. They translate it in King James that he released his ghost or he gave up his ghost. Interesting, right? I mean, ghost in Greek is phantasma. It's a, where we get phantom. I think it's phantasma, phantom. But that's where we get phantom. Phantom or ghost. The holy ghost in the King James, by the way, is never the... the um, the hagios, which is holy, phantasm, phantasma, or let's just say phantom, the holy phantom. Never in Greek is it called phantom, the holy spirit. It's the, it's the hagios pneuma, holy spirit, not hagios phantasma, holy ghost. Okay? But understanding... What the translators are trying to put in there as far as when Jesus breathed his last or gave up his ghost, maybe we could just translate it right and say he gave up his spirit because that word spirit is tied into that word neo. Oh, by the way, so neo in, in Matrix, what would he have been if he had the breath of life? A man with spirit in him now, Holy Spirit. It represents it. I'm not saying he was Holy Spirit, but I'm seeing the character. It's all, if you can just get the little clues that are put in there. Man, I, I, I'll go into the Matrix some other time. Man, there's so many similarities with my life, though. Neo was 30. I was 30 when I got red-pilled from Jehovah's Witnesses' religion, calling on the name of Jesus, receiving the red pill of truth in me, and boom, my whole reality suddenly shifted, and everything just started to get altered, and oh, what is going on? I saw that movie, Matrix, and I'm telling you, I don't care who's offended by it or not, that was, that, that's like my, that was my life story in so many different ways. Anyway... Yeah, let's let's get to driving and talking. I gotta go. I gotta go. Today's a work day. I gotta go to get a workout before I go to work. Um.
There's something different about the breath of life. than the breath of oxygen. I guarantee you that centurion saw spirit because it says he saw he saw spirit come out of Jesus. By the way that spirit never died. Christ did. Christ is taking what is of the Spirit and putting it into or even upon a man. And that man is a spiritual being and he's the Christ, the first one to ever be the spirit man. Scripture might call him the last Adam. There's a little hint in there because the first Adam became a living nephesh. He became a living nephesh. It doesn't say that the first Adam became a living ruach. So he became a living soul. But see, the ruach, which is the breath of life, Hear me, please. Because in the New Testament, we get gemstones deposited into that word. P-N-E-O. Which is rooted in the pneuma. Because pneuma is the Greek word for the Hebrew word ruach. Spirit. And Jesus breathed out his, he breathed out his last, he, <laughs> ek, neo. He breathed out, not oxygen, he released his spirit. Started in the nostrils, exited through the mouth. Adam, Adam, when he partook from the tree of death, like a needle going into a tire on your vehicle, just such a tiny little hole. But very, 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 very slowly did life leak out of Adam. That's why in Hebrew, God says the day you eat of that fruit, the process of dying begins. That's what the Hebrew meaning of what God said is. So the process of dying begins, meaning life, this breath of life, the spirit of Adam leaked out because he stayed alive he stayed alive right as spirit was leaking out death was creeping in the process of dying began and just like when your car tire finally goes flat that's it. And that's what happened to Adam. Adam almost made it to a thousand years. Methuselah came a lot closer to the a thousand years 
than Adam did, but nobody made it that far. Not on earth. You take somebody like an Elijah or somebody like Enoch and you rapture them up and you take them out of this place where time affects everyone and everything but in the realm that Enoch and Elijah were raptured up to in this rapture they did not put on glorified bodies yet I don't believe maybe maybe not but perhaps God gave them something to travel in. Some type of protection, maybe. Maybe when they travel, maybe they use some type of thing, craft, to get around in. Just like a whole bunch of other spiritual beings that you thought all of them had wings and could fly anywhere. But when they enter into this, this realm... They use things that have to be made of substance because in this realm there's laws of time and space and such. So they use the material things from this realm and they mix their spiritual stuff with it and their stuff, their technologies do things that you can't even imagine. And perhaps Enoch and Elijah, Elia, Elia, Perhaps they have something they travel in too. Because I don't think they put on an immortal, spiritually glorified body yet. But I just went on a little, tiny little rabbit trail for you to think about. So Methuselah gets closest to living this thousand years. Adam got pretty close to they got into the 900 mark but they just didn't quite make it to the 1000 mark except Christ in the millennial reign what does millennial reign mean the 1000 year reign there's a reason there's a reason for this 1000 year reign. I listen, I don't I I I I don't know it yet. God just showed me a piece of the puzzle recently that I never thought about until he brought it to my attention and eventually he's going to have me make a video about it. But not just yet, but I'm getting glimpses of it. I'm getting glimpses of it this thousand year reign because Christ is going to take man to that 1000 year mark and then what happens after that it's a whole bunch of stuff in Revelation whole bunch of stuff that's going to be revealed whole bunch of stuff that's going to manifest we'll find out in a thousand years right but it's interesting Because Methuselah and Adam both, even though, because Methuselah was born into from Adam, right? Adam, his great, great, whatever, grandfather. Methuselah and Adam had something in common death was in them death was in them the breath of life wasn't you and I like Methuselah because we were born into Adam 
who no longer had the breath of life because it was leaking out of him. The process of dying had begun. So outside of the garden, his children had oxygen to breathe. Just like there is water to drink and you might call water life, but there's a difference with water and living water. Because inside of you, you got rivers, plural, just like in the garden. There were rivers in the garden called Eden. And you have rivers in you too of living water in your belly, in your womb, in your matrix. That's what matrix means, womb. Yeshua says, out of your womb will flow rivers of living water. I assure you, he's not talking about the stuff that's inside of lakes and oceans and swimming pools and bathtubs. It might help you live, keep your body sustained and all that because you need it. And breathing oxygen is God's grace to help us live because we need it. But this oxygen is not the breath of life. And those waters that you drink are not rivers of living waters. The breath of life, the living waters, the spirit, it's all the same substance. That's what it is, you guys. It is spirit in you. Just like Mary had the Christ in her womb, you and I have the Christ in our womb. We are carriers of the Christ, which is spirit. Chul. Because spiritual Christ, listen, Christ is spirit. But the Bible says that Christ died. Look it up. You can look up everywhere. What? Doesn't it say that Jesus died? I've been saying it all along too. Jesus died. Jesus died. Well, I found a scripture that says, Jesus Christ was killed but the word Christ was in there but do you know when you read in the New Testament it always says Christ died and I always thought Christ was the spirit only Christ is more like the soul the living soul that Adam became because Adam had spirit and Adam had body so when you take spirit and you take body which is made from earth, you take something from the spirit, you take something from the earth, and you bring them together, you got something spiritual. Like I was even saying about the serpent, formed of something of earth, but also of spirit. That's why angels are called ministering spirits, yet they have some kind of body called oikaterion. Because they're spiritual. You guys, we've been fooled, man. I'm sorry, we've been fooled by religion. We've been fooled by people that are that are uh, uh, scholars, biblical scholars. But we gotta go over this stuff because I've been thinking about this stuff for so many years and I wanna get things right. Christ died every time, except for one verse, I think, maybe two, but I think it was just one where I found Jesus Christ was killed. But Christ died. We're talking about that spiritual man. But his spirit didn't die. <laughs> his spirit didn't die. Because he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit, my pneuma, my ruach. 
You can't kill spirit. Not when it's holy. Because when you have the Holy Spirit, that is the spirit of life. That is the breath of life. That is living waters. It's also fire. It's also fire. Scripture says our God is an all-consuming fire. All-consuming fire which purifies Fire purifies, it cleanses. I remember when I was a kid, sometimes I get splinters in my finger. I still do, I get what's called hair splinters when I'm cutting people's hair. They actually get trapped in my finger and they, 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 they are just like a splinter they hurt they're harder to get out than a wood splinter because it's a piece of hair and they're so much smaller and hard to see hard to grab on to with a pair of tweezers so sometimes you got to get a needle and you got to dig it in your skin and our mom remember my mom would take that needle and put it above a flame and let the fire purify the tip of that needle because supposedly it worked better than rubbing alcohol. So fire purifies. Fire cleanses. Our God is an all-consuming fire. That's a pretty hot fire. I wonder what fires. I wonder what fire is hotter. I wonder what fire is hotter. The fire of God or the fire of hell? Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, because they would not bow to the beast and its image. They were thrown into a fiery furnace. The man that threw them into got too close to the furnace and got burned up. Because that furnace was an all-consuming fire. I guess for that man, it was hell. But for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they were thrown in, there was someone in there with them. And as long as they were in the presence of that someone, that fire did not burn them up because they took on the substance of that presence. Somehow that presence protected them. Just like that presence perhaps protects Enoch and Elijah. That presence protected them. It looked like, what was the quote? Son of man? There was a being in there with them. And the king whose image they did not bow down to was shocked. Because when these three young men were taken out of that fiery furnace, they didn't even smell like smoke. I wonder... When we exit these bodies, unless you're one of those that remain. If you're one of those that remain, there's gonna be something that happens in the twinkling of an eye. Where your spirit and your soul and your body are going to become complete and one. And there
Yeah, come on, he <laughs> Combine so much. You can't tell what part is spirit or soul or body. You just won. An amazing, spiritually glorified being. The kind that Jesus was when he was raised from the dead. Some people might not recognize you. Some people might. Is that you? They didn't recognize Jesus. It was like a veil was over their eyes. But he did things to unveil their eyes so they'd recognize him. Because he was spiritually glorified. So much. That the laws on this earth... did not pertain to him. Because you could go and lock yourself behind four walls and that door has a lock on it. There's no way in, there's no way out. And it's this just empty room. Four walls, roof closed in. And can you imagine what it would be like if you were in a room and suddenly, not a spirit appears before you, not a demon, not a phantom or a ghost. We're talking a human? A human is in front of me? How did he get in here? How did he do that? Did he turn invisible? Does he know how to materialize and then dematerialize? That's just our earthly language, materializing and dematerializing. You think demons can materialize? If they could, why are they wanting to jump into other people's bodies then? If you're seeing a demon materialize, sorry, you're seeing a spiritual being that the Bible might call angel, but it's not a good one. I'm not saying there's not good angels. But if they're there to terrify you, or if they're there to accept your worship, they are liars. They are deceivers. They are not light. And I don't care how much they shine. They can be a great shining one. Oh, if you only know what I'm telling you. Shining one. So you might look at it because you're so used to being carnal that when you see something shiny, it looks like light to you. It must be light. Just like when you look up into the heavens and you see this thing called the S-U-N, what we call sun in English. Well, that's not the true sun, S-O-N. There's a difference. There's the natural and then there's the supernatural. And you and I, we are... We are going to put on something supernatural. It's in us waiting to be released. Just like that caterpillar is waiting to be released so it can fly like the butterfly it is. Because if you study the DNA of a caterpillar, it will every single time read out butterfly. How can that be? This is a caterpillar. Well, the DNA says butterfly. But it's a caterpillar. Oh, but the DNA says it's butterfly. People might look at you right now in this world. They don't see nothing spiritual about you at all. But guess what? They might call you a caterpillar, but your DNA says butterfly, if you know what I'm saying. Because you are a Christed being. You are a spiritual being at the same time a physical being. Your body might hunger, you might thirst, you might need oxygen in your lungs, but, but when you breathe out the breath of life, that is different because Jesus says you will never die. Why is that? Because you are the breath of life. You are rivers of living waters. You are spirit, you are fire. People got a glimpse of who they were when these tongues of fire appeared above their head. Because the tongue is the most powerful weapon in our bodies. 
The writer of the book of James said that. The tongue. Such a small thing. Like the udder of a ship. Such a small little thing. Yet, that tiny little udder has the power to move this ship through great oceans. Your tongue can destroy like a fire that annihilates or your tongue can destroy darkness. But your tongue can also speak life because that fire is life. Right? And these people, they had this fire above their heads. And then they started speaking in languages that they never were taught. Anyway, I think I'm going to end it here. I got to go. There's so much more I can say. I mean, get me to shut up, please. So I love you guys. God bless you, Lord, if there's anything else that I have not said that needs to be said. Let me know now. Otherwise, I'll stop it here. When you accepted the truth pill, there's a reason they made it red in that movie. That represents the blood of Jesus. When you didn't taste the truth pill, when you didn't touch the truth pill, it's when you received it by plucking it from the hand of grace. That's that other guy in the movie that was handing Neo the truth pill. The hand of grace. The hand of grace was said, you can have this one if you want. That's grace to give you the choice. Want the blue one? Here, I'll put the blue one in my left hand. You want the red one? I'll put that in my right hand. Yeshua, Yahweh. They start with the Hebrew letter Yod. Yod is the hand. Go a little deeper. It's the right hand. Go a little deeper. It's the right hand of favor. Go a little deeper. It's God's grace. But grace also allows you to choose this. Oh, the choice is yours, God says. Choose life. And just like Neo, he chooses the red pill, which is truth, which is life, which is the breath of life, which is living waters, which is fire of the Holy Spirit. And he consumes the whole thing. Oh. See, Eve, the serpent. Look, there's a choice. You can make a choice. You can make a choice. See how the serpent is an antichrist? Make a choice, make a choice. Here, on the right hand, oh, tree of life. But <laughs> on the left hand, there's something special here. Look at this fruit. The color is blue. The tree of life, it's fruit, that's red. You never ate blue fruit before, did you? Let's take that blue. Let's take that blue. See, 
If you look up in the sky, it's blue. If you look into the waters, they're blue. Isn't that delightful to your eyes? And Eve sees the fruit. And it is a delight to her eyes, just like the garden. Eden means the garden of delight. And she takes this fruit of delight. So she thinks. And she consumes it and swallows it down. She didn't touch. Although she said, I shouldn't touch. She didn't taste. She consumed and gave some to her husband. And they both stepped into untruth, unreality, the lie, the matrix. And there is a God of that matrix, a God of that lie, the father of the lie. That's why he's called the God of the lie, because he's the father of the lie. You understand? And when you're in that realm, you're in the delusion. And there's going to be even a greater one sent. Sometimes that red pill of truth just might be a hard pill to swallow. just might be a hard pill to swallow, right? Just like for Neo in the movie The Matrix, because everything shifted. And suddenly what he thought was reality because he was born in that world. But when he took the red pill, he just became no part of it. Now, everything didn't instantly shift and he understood how everything works in the truth world, in reality. He didn't understand how it works. The matrix might have seemed a whole lot better. But there were beings in that movie that wanted that place called Earth. Earth, by the way, means land in Hebrew. It's the land they wanted. Your pictures of globes and such from NASA. Oh, if you only knew. Some of you do. Some of you do. Making the earth look like it's just all the water and land and everything just combined together. No, there's differences, you guys. Oh, the water might be on the land. And the land under the water, which is when you take dirt and you get it all it, under waters like oceans. And that dirt moves around and moves around and moves around and moves around through friction and time and friction and time and friction and time. That dirt becomes sand. Just like if you take a piece of glass and throw it into the ocean and then that glass, which could cut you, which would hurt you, or which you would tell your kids, don't ever touch that, which you're going to be careful if you pick up. But if you've ever picked up ocean glass is not dangerous. Why? Because through fit friction and time and tension and all these things, it was changed and it became smooth. Now it's ocean glass. People collect that stuff. They'll pay for that stuff. That's what sand is. So waters are on the earth, but the earth is the land. The earth is the land. In that movie Matrix, there's entities that want that land. In that movie, The Matrix, these entities lived in something called AI. Artificial intelligence. 
artificial wisdom. It looks like the real thing, but it's artificial. Do you know what anti means? Anti as in antichrist? Artificial. Do you know what antichrist means? Artificial Christ. Artificial Christ. This artificial Christ is going to have the greatest delusion over people that are still in that matrix, that are blue-pilled, that refuse to take the red one because that red one, there's too many demands. It's too scary there. I want no part of it. I don't like the people that re represent it. Well, guess what? Sorry. I apologize on the behalf of all of those people that have misrepresented truth. I being one of them, I apologize on behalf of all of them because many of them do not know what they do. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Anybody that's watching that has not received Christ, I, I plead with you and I apologize. I apologize about the hypocrisy that these so-called Christed ones have given you. I apologize for their condemnation. I apologize for their confusion. I apologize that they made it look like you had to work for God to get him in your life and to please him. You got to be his slave. You got to get attached to a leash. I apologize for those that have misled you because Yeshua takes you off of the leash and he doesn't regret it either. And if they ever blast you with a verse that says, he that endures to the end will be saved. That verse obviously applies to those who are not saved because it says they will be saved. Well, there are scriptures that says you already are saved by grace through faith. Faith in what? Faith in his grace because grace is the hands. Grace is the yod. That is the right hand of favor of grace and grace has Yeshua his name Yeshua means salvation grace has Yeshua in his hands in her hands grace your faith grabs a hold of the free gift of Yeshua you cannot earn it you cannot work for it, and you most definitely cannot lose it. Any Christian pastor, any preacher, any theologist, any scholar, I dare you, I dare you to look into the scriptures and just go a little deeper. He that endures to the end will be saved. That's because they're not do you know when I endured to my end? When I was 30 years old. When I gave up my false identity as a Jehovah's Witness, living in a matrix, being told I'm in the world but no part of it, when actually, oh, I was in it. And then I took the truth pill. And my reality shifted. I called on the name of Jesus forbidden for a Jehovah's Witness, and I did it anyway. Oh, you hypocritical preachers holding on to hypocrisy, damning everybody, getting them to question their salvation, getting them to question their Yeshua. How dare you? Just like Neo in that movie, The Matrix. Things shifted for me, and it was a process just like that freaking caterpillar. There is a process to it becoming a butterfly, but I freaking tell you now, its DNA is butterfly. And when it endures 
to the end, it is shown what a butterfly it always was. I endured to the end of that caterpillar life. I took on Yeshua. I became that butterfly, but I didn't know how to fly. Nobody was teaching me. I had to learn. Just like some butterflies that are born all alone in the world, they got to learn. But guess what? There's something in them, something that's in their nature that just knows how to train them. Oh, they might be a slow learner like me. Granted. But I assure you, I don't need to endure nothing else to be saved. I already got saved. I endured to my end. The old Michael LeRae. Just like Adam in the garden. And I'm going to end it here. I promise. Adam ate the fruit. Adam now sees that he's naked. And it makes him afraid. I heard you walking in the garden, Yahweh. And I was afraid. For I am naked. He's exposed. Something changed. Something changed. His nature was changed. So much that even Yahweh himself looks right at that man who's hiding behind trees. Oh, trust me. Trees don't block Yahweh's vision. Just like your body does not block your heavenly father's vision. He sees your spirit. Yahweh saw Adam, but he looks right at him in his eyes and says, Adam, where are you? Because that was not the man that he created. Look like him talked like him, might have even acted like him. It was an anti-Adam. He did not recognize this anti-Adam, this artificial Adam. Because the real Adam died. My old Adam, my old Adam, who Yahweh says, I never knew you. Who Yeshua says, I never knew you. Get away from me. How could you have never known me? <laughs> I'm Michael the Ray. I, I, I knew you. I did works. Remember? <laughs> I was watchtowering in your name. <laughs> I was going to the Kena Hall preaching your message. <laughs> I said, in the name of Jesus, I pray at the end of my prayers. You, you don't, you don't know me. I never knew you. But when I took on Christ by consuming him, like that truth pill, even though I was a mess, even though I didn't, who am I now? Who am I? He says, my son, there you are. There you are. So he could look right at me and say, Michael, Jason, Larray, there you are. Welcome home. I love you guys. That's your story too, if you want it. Please, please receive him now. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Be one with my spirit. Be one with me. I receive you. You are my savior. You are my Yahweh. You are my God. I thank you. I believe in you. It's a free gift. Thanks for watching. See you next time.